What is going on YouTube fam? Mikey here shooting another high adventure video with me bro. You guys may have heard of him, I Ace Videos. Emmy Ancient, Pops. Thanks for joining us guys. Our first ever crawfish cook-off, bro. I'm Jack, uh -huh. I'm Jack. Last video we did the frog cook-off. Now it's crawdads, you guys asked for it. Of course, first we gotta go get some, so guys, Let's nothing left it. to do but dive into the icy waters of the river, go get some crawfish. Whoa. All right, bro. First crawdad yes. hunt of the year. First dive, I guess. First, you know, actually, this was my first crawdad hunt this oh. year, personally, mm -hmm. all together. So good family tradition. Yes, yes. This has become tradition. Like last like five years now or something. I think we just so. always go for crawdad dive. That's a nice spoon. Suits. We always seem yes. to find about like thirty to forty dollars worth of lures uh -huh. every year that uh -huh. we go diving. Big fat crawdads out, oh, yeah. guys. They were mongos this year. Sometimes it's a little bit up and down. Almost all of them were big fat porkers right yeah, there. Yeah, and this is you diving right here. Yes. This is Ace. And yeah, it seemed like every, I didn't, I maybe ran across two small crawdads uh -huh. my whole dive. Like two that I legit just let go because I didn't feel right keeping them. Everything was just big. Uh huh. I found big. this sweet swim bait here too. Now my question is, <laughs> Who was using an ocean swim bait in the little trout river? Dude, that's like a six inch long swim bait. Like, I don't know what kind of size trout they think we have in the Boise River, but I don't know. That's that's a pretty bold move. That, that, was, that was probably the biggest lure I've ever found in there. Yeah. Like, you got the small spinners, then you got the big swim baits. And then you got, I found some like, what those big uh, spoons that people like bottom fish with, you uh, know, in the ocean. Yes, that's true. That are like true. six ounces. Uh -huh. and no, we don't have salmon. You know, we don't have king salmon <laughs> running up this river. <laughs> well, these the salmon would get big if they were if they could eat these crawdads, though. Yeah, I mean, that's for real. that's why there's so many crawdads, and they don't have anything eating them. It's not like there are bass or anything in this river. Yeah, well, that was quite ambitious of you going after that massive stone there. <laughs> I mean, look at these good grief, dude. Good night. That is. I've been in the gym. Yeah, in my I guess outdoor so. underwater gym. I guess so. Good grief, man. You're just. This is a, quite a haul. This was a really nice haul today, too. Uh -huh. Now, this is me subtly emptying the water here, as you can see. And I, same thing with me. I found a lot of my crawdads, actually, this time, it seemed the majority of them were pretty shallow. Yeah. Oh, all of them were real shallow. It's like they had just come out, and they were going into the shallow where water get warm. I found all... I didn't find a single one down deep, yeah. actually. Yeah. And, I, and later on here, you'll see, I, I get some of them in deeper water. And it's funny, because in the shallow dude, water... Big. I know, dude. Look at that. Look at that sucker. Like under that tiny rock. <laughs> and I don't know why I pounced on him so quickly. He was half asleep. So, I mean, it's not like he was going anywhere. I mean, he had dust on him. So, it's not <laughs> he like he had just he was... emerged from hibernation. <laughs> Exactly. Now, see, there's like a nice little that, like three dollar spinner. Uh -huh. That's awesome. And it seemed like in the shallow areas, a lot of them were under rocks. But see, now as I'm going deeper, it's it's I don't know what it was, but in the deeper water, they were just dude. Out. That's big. I know, man. That's huge. you see the white on their claws. That's oftentimes like how I'm able to spot them. I uh -huh. see that white in like the crux of their claws. There, yeah, it almost looks like two little white eyes on the bottom. Uh, guys, you see how big? The reason why they get so big is they have all this stuff to feed on on the bottom. There's right. just all this like trash and stuff. And they're, I mean, like the trout really don't eat them. Uh huh. And, and so they just sit in that river, and that river's cold for like 10 months out of the year. Mm -hmm. So they just sit in there and get porky, yeah. basically. So good claw meat. That guy was just barely coming out. You can see. Pretty yeah. Pale looking. I found a few soft ones too. Uh huh. I, I did too. There. A couple soft ones. And then, oh, your bonus yes. Gatorade. But I always find a few of these every year. And I mean, they look, that's like 219 at the gas yeah. station. <laughs> the gas station it is. <laughs> and you found two of them. Guys, people float down the river in, in, with their coolers. And a lot of times the coolers spill open. And uh, we actually find drinks every year. Yep. Just floating yep. down the river. Drinks, unopened. all kinds of fun stuff. This is me ancient. Yeah. Boy, he hasn't lost his touch, has no. he? He is no. still out there. I mean, you guys can see he's look at that, he's moving boulders, <laughs> grabbing crawdads. He's uh, yeah, he he's still a, one of the best crawdad hunters out of all of us. Now what? Now is I don't know. That? And with dentist was snorkeling or something like that. Yeah, but, I don't uh, know. Some white fish. They're super bony, but those are really delicious to eat. They actually. are. They a are. lot of them in the river. They are so hard to catch, though. I don't. I've, I've only caught yeah. one, guys, ever in all the years I've grown up in Idaho. Only caught one my whole life. Yeah, so I think I've caught one or two. They're really good, but like, like I said, super bony, so it doesn't really, I don't target them. Yeah. <laughs> I'd rather have a nice fresh trout. Well, he's just sitting up top. Yep. He bold. got away though, I think, but Me Ancient gets redemption here. 
on this little guy. I think a guy was sitting out there because he had an escape plan. He's like, yeah. if somebody comes, yeah. I'll just slip I tell you, it's nice him. having those gloves, though, man. Uh -huh. That is so awesome. Yeah. Good day of crawdad hunting for sure. Yep. Look at that. We were we were only out there for like an hour, yeah. and we found all these dudes. What a haul! What a haul! All right, guys, we have our cooler full of freshwater crawdads as compared to saltwater crawdads, if yeah, that's a thing. saltwater, no, also known as lobster. That too, that too. Of course, dude, the, the crawdads here in Idaho. They're, they're like this big beefy dude. Yeah. Like, I mean, are you kidding me? I'll bet that dude's six inches long right there. Look at that bad boy. There's good meat in those claws. Guys, the, the table is set. The battle is getting ready to begin. Ace. I'm Ooh. using wine for the first time. Whoa. I'm getting fancy. Yeah, you really raised the stakes, so I was like, you know what? I've been practicing. I've been preparing all off season wow. for this one. Dude, there is no off season. <laughs> Are you using the whole stick of butter? Uh, yeah, just about basically what? a whole stick of butter in mine. Good grief. Guys, this is a big deal because this is our first ever crawdad cook-off. It's like the Frog Lake cook-off. This, this is like for bragging rights, and it's just a different species. It's not a fish. So there's, I feel like there's just a little extra juice, a little mm -hmm. extra energy for yeah. something like this. Be, king, be crowned the Crawdad Cook-Off King, bro. Crawdad Cook-Off King. That, that's really what this is all about. Bro, the people have asked for it. But the game's begin. <laughs> all right, let's do this. All right, guys, everything you see here today, I'll have links in the description below. Little portable cooker. Got these little portable pots and everything like that. First thing we're gonna get going is we're gonna boil up some water because I wanna boil some of these crawdads. Here we go. Let's grab this guy right here to start off with. We've got our boiling water. I'm just gonna drop them right in. And they're dead instantly. When they hit that, when they hit that boiling water, they go. So the goal here with this first phase is to just cook these for just long enough to where I can take the meat out of the tails and the claws. Just like that, see the nice red color we're getting out of these bad boys? Look at that, it's perfect. We're gonna just rotate them in and out of this hot tub. So what I'm doing is turning a bowl of this into a bowl of this right here. All crawdad tail and claw meat that's about 75% cooked. Next, what we're gonna do with this meat is we're gonna saute it in some seasonings. We're gonna throw a little Italian seasoning on there along with some Team Weber roasted garlic and herb. Weber. 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 Got some parsley flex. Weber. Dude, I've moved on to parsley. This is McCormick right here. Mix all that together nicely. Let that kind of marinate in those that dry rub, I guess you could call it. Dry rub crawdad. I don't know if that's a thing or not, but it is now. Now off to the side of the table, check this out. I have brought with me today a steamer and we are going to be steaming up some fresh asparagus my dad loves asparagus we've got a nice little steam bath going there gonna let that sit in there for about six seven minutes that is the secret side dish for team micah so as i'm cooking ace over there is doing a lot of the same things yeah, but but ladies and gentlemen i had a subscriber suggest this to me Carigold. Pure Irish butter, Ooh. which of now, of course, I've got to use an Irish accent if I can pull one out here. I'm going to be using a little of the pure Irish butter. This is much sweeter and a lot more hearty. We're going to be using this today as our base, and Ace is going to be kissing our Blarney Stone when it's all said and done. So with our melted butter, we're going to throw in a little Chardonnay. Now, we're going to go ahead and give this a try because I actually have not had Chardonnay before. Okay, perfect. When I researched, it said it was sweet, but not too sweet. Mike like, copied me. No, oh, no way. Mm -hmm. Wait, what do you have? White Zinfandel. Wow. From Rivendell. <laughs> anyway, we're going to be pouring a little bit of that in with our butter. Butter's nice and melted. Trying not to burn it. Go ahead and pour that Chardonnay just a little bit. There we go. And to that butter, I also am going to add a little extra garlic. 
Last piece of the puzzle to this sauce is a fresh lemon. I'm gonna squeeze some fresh lemon juice right in. There we go, perfect. Let all that cook down. Check that out. We went ahead and added some parsley flakes in there as well. Let's give it a taste test. We got a little on a spoon there. Oh, that's really good. That's really good. Now we come to the reason why we did not cook those cryadas all the way. Those have hopefully been sitting in that seasoning, soaking up that flavoring, our dry rub. Now, we're just gonna put all that right in there. Finish cooking in our hashtag butter bath. I'm just stir all that in there, make sure everything gets a nice butter and lemon and Chardonnay coating there. Now we're just gonna finish cooking them off. All right, still taking great care not to burn any of that butter, but also not letting that crawdad cook too long. I think this is pretty much done here. Go ahead and add some asparagus on the side there. We want to lightly salt that asparagus as well. And then we're just going to let me ancient roll that asparagus around in that butter and lemon sauce. And there we have it guys. Let's hope that's the winning dish. Okay. So uh, we got a little something here from the old man. Check this out. He was swimming in the river <laughs> while we were cooking pops. He, you've, it's my new Dell computer. <laughs> <laughs> that is, why would somebody well, throw their computer in the river like that? Or maybe somebody stole it and ah, got stole crazy, it. Got, got scared or something. Uh -huh. It was right under a bridge. Was it under, oh, you know what? That's why we find backpacks and stuff too, under the bridge. Yeah. Seems like a really old one, it's like really thick. Oh golly, yeah it is. Huh? Oh yeah, that's a really, guys, I, like, let's see, Windows XP? <laughs> like, can some geek out there tell us what Windows XP, it's a D610 latitude? I don't, I don't think the backspace works anymore either. No, I'd say that's a little roughed up. That is yeah, crazy, yeah. Pops. Yeah, kind of fun. Wow. All right, guys, so here's my plan. Got some river water here, and I'm going to boil my crawdads first. I've got boiling water here, and I'm boiling the crawdads off. And the reason why we do that, guys, is because, see, if I just took one of these raw right here and just started trying to crack them open, um, the meat would just stick to the sides and be impossible to remove it in one chunk. And so boiling off just super fast so that the meat shrinks inside the shell and we can remove it and then use it to do better things. Pick the reddest ones out. We're gonna let them cool first and peel them. I want just the tail and claw meat. And the next step is to take these guys. They're just slightly undercooked. The meat feels soft, like obviously the meat, but it's like really soft, almost jelly-like a little bit. So I cooked them perfectly where when I throw them in this sauce I'm about to make, they'll have just a little bit more to cook. Oh, like look at the claws on this guy. Now we can use these big meaty claws. All right, folks, time to make the sauce. This is gonna go fast. I have everything laid out and I'm just gonna take a big thing of this butter, because butter is going to be one of the main ingredients in the sauce here. Now I have pre-cut or pre-minced some garlic. We're going to throw the garlic in there as well. I have in a little Ziploc bag here a mixture of flour, salt, pepper. Oop, can't add it all at once, otherwise it'll ball up. Flour, salt, pepper, and a little sugar in this mixture. And I'm just going to sprinkle that in and stir it as it gets sprinkled in. I can't, I can't let it clump up or it will make like these little dough balls or flour balls. Let that cook down to all the flours added. Now I'm just gonna add some wine. Now I'll add the crawdad. Gonna cook fast. This is by far the fanciest dish I've ever made for a cook-off because Gordon Ramsay over there keeps taking it to the next level Last couple of cook-offs, it was like Chef Boyardee versus Gordon Ramsay out on the boat. Folks, I think it is ready. I have here some pre-made rice that I made at home uh, because I didn't it didn't want to uh, obviously bring all that stuff out here. And I'm just putting my crawdads over this bed of rice right here. Good saucy, saucy crawdads. And there we go. Let's see if this will be the winning dish. Hi, bro. Cheers. Cheers. Good luck to you. May the force be with you. Always. <laughs> Before we get started, let's say a quick prayer. Dear Lord, thank you for so much for this wonderful day and for the meal you provided us with today. May you bless it to our bodies and thank you for this time that we had out on the water. In Jesus I pray. Amen. All right, bro. You won. Oh, I thought you I, I, I didn't want a handshake. 
I tell you what, you won the Frog Lake Cook-Off. You uh, get to go, go first, first, my man. All right. Wow, this looks really good. for you crawfish lace. Lace. <laughs> All right. Bon appetit. I couldn't think of any other name. That, that crawdad is cooked good. Okay. It's very flavorful. I don't know what you got going on there, but with the rice and everything, man, it's like uh, <clears throat> it cuts it just right. Mm-hmm. Very tasty. You got that bland rice and then the strong flavor of the crawdads. Exactly. And and whatever you put it in, I better stop there. Cleanse the old palate. There you go. A little glass of water yep. before we move on to the next one. Hi Pops, I have for you a sauteed crawdad tail and craw meat, or Ooh. crawdad tail and uh, claw meat right. in some Italian seasonings with some garlic, roasted garlic and herb seasoning. Wow. Uh, with a little side dish of uh, asparagus. That asparagus. was sauteed in a lemon, butter, and chardonnay sauce as well. Wow, all right. Oh, and then to wash it down, I have a nice cold glass of some chardonnay that I thought would complement uh, the crawdad tail meat, the little seafood that we got going on there. Mm. Well, but it comes down to the dish. You know, how does the food right, taste? Right, right. So we we didn't come out here to make wine. We came out here to cook. Crawdads. You know, I actually stomped those grapes in my house. <laughs> Deliberations. This, I'll tell you, it's so hard because they're both so dang good. This is taking longer and longer. Yeah, well, I, I, this, really these are, you guys have upped your games. I, I gotta tell you, both of you is like boom, boom, Thank boom, you. boom. It's amazing. So between this one and this one, that for me has a little too much spice. Not too much spice, but it overpowers the crawdad. I'm tasting more crawdad and then the rice kind of cuts it. So it kind of keeps the palate cleansed, I guess would be the way to say it. This time, I am going to uh, award first place to, uh, what did you call it, Crawdad the Ace? La Ace. La Ace. No! Yes! Uh, uh, I am the crawfish and cook-off. I want to award you. Oh, geez. With La Crown. Oh, boy. Thank you, sir. Folks, wow. <laughs> this feels good. The crown, good the you. crawfish cook-off crown is a heavy weight to bear, but I will bear the responsibility nobly. I would like to thank my mother who gave me the whole recipe, actually. She was the one that helped me with the, this recipe, and I practiced at home so I could pull it off during game time. And so she is a, she's a Southern lady who is the best cook I have ever been around. Can I throw a challenge flag on that? Our mom helped you uh -huh. with the dish. <laughs> did you ask her for help? No, I thought well, this was all like we came up with it on our own. I didn't wait, realize wait, we could go to wife. mom. Hey, you have a wife. You have don't, a wife? Don't tell me your wife So I have help to go stuff. to mother and ask for her advice. Man. And she gave me really good advice. That's Bro, good congratulations. Thank you, Good sir. job winning you the first too. ever crawdad. I feel like thank you, me ancient, for judging as thank well. Thank you, gentlemen. I've got a feeling there are more to come. Uh -huh. More to come. Well, YouTube fam, Team Micah takes the L, unfortunately, for the second time in a row. Man, flexing on me with that crown. That's just ridiculous. Bro, though, congratulations. Well done. Thank you. Me you ancient, too. thank, thank you. you. The real winner thank you, yes, of all of these videos. Every time. Guys, let us know. What do you want to see next? What kind of cook-off you want to see? Let's try to keep it aqua. Uh -huh. Let's keep it in the water, you know? Last time we had some weird suggestions. Yeah. You know, rat cook-off. Yeah, no. it was it was I like ain't, kangaroo cook-off. No, rat. no yeah. rodent. <laughs> but we really want to know what you guys yeah. like. Because yeah. you guys might have some stuff we've never thought of before. Yeah, so. yeah. We want to know. We want to know. Hit us up in the comments below. Guys, thank you so much for watching. Hope you guys enjoyed both recipes. We will see you in the next one.